There is a hack circulating online right now where you can easily change Nikon RAW files into RED R3D files and gain complete control of the image, but utilizing RED's powerful image pipeline. So let's break it down and see if it's possible. We're in DaVinci Resolve and we have our clip right here. We are looking at an NRAW clip. That is the file uh, extension .nev, and we can find that clip up here. And what's really interesting is if you just navigate to that actual file, and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that clip, and then we're going to actually just change the file extension to R3D, and that is how we convert an NEV file to an R3D file. It seems a little too good to be true, but it actually works. So we're just going to change .nev to R3D and click Enter. We're going to click use R3D and immediately we see it listed as an R3D file. Now, when we drag that clip in, it will show up as a red clip. So right here we have a red clip that we converted and I already have it listed right here. And now you can see the difference. Here is the same clip, but converted to R3D. And then here it is as a .nev file, the same exact file but different um, pipelines. So let's go ahead and look at the color page and see how this plays out. All right, so we're looking at the NRAW clip and we're gonna go look at the camera raw settings. Here I have everything already adjusted where we have an icon analog that we're using in Rec 2020. Uh, we've already set our color temperature to 6,000, our tint to three. Uh, the exposure, I gave it a little bit of a bump because it was underexposed. Um, I can actually turn down the sharpness there and then I'll leave all these other settings the same. And then what I would like to do for this scenario only, I'm going to go ahead and enable a color space transform that will convert from Rec 2020 analog to Rec 79 Gamma 2.4. And so I have a color space transform right here. And once I enable that, you can see this is what the image looks like. This is a NRAW clip from a Nikon camera in the .nev file extension name. Now we're going to go straight over to our red clip here. And we're going to do the same thing, but we need to adjust our settings. So we're going to click on clip. We're going to use the IPP2 color science, red wide gamut RGB, log 3G10, blend type none, all this other stuff here. But what's interesting is, look at this. This is the same clip, but you get all this other camera raw information. And we're going to compare to see how different it is from the Nikon raw pipeline structure. So Right away, it immediately changed my ISO to 320. That was one thing I noticed with this. So you have to go back up to 800 because that is what the native ISO was when it was filmed. And then we have this extra check mark here, chroma noise reduction. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But we need to change our color temperature to the same settings we had for our NRAW clip. And this one was 3 on the tint. And then our exposure was just 0.33. So now we should have the exact same settings between these two clips, and then we're gonna use a color space transform to go from red, white, gamut, RGB, red log, 3G10, to Rec 79, gamma, 2.4. And there we go. And if you look at both of these images, they're nearly the same except for the blues. And I'm gonna talk about why that is in just a second. So if we just layer these over, and I just disable the top one, you look at it, we only are seeing a change in the blues. I'm gonna open up my scopes over here, and I'm just gonna disable channel two. There's a little bit of a shift going on in the, I would say the lime colors over here, yellows to green. It's very subtle, but everything else feels like it's pretty much pointing in the right direction, except for the blues. So the blues has some really interesting, it feels like gamut mapping issues. Whenever I break this down in one of the next clips, you will really clearly see what's going on and why this workflow is honestly better than using the native and raw option. Real quick, if you haven't heard, we have made the most accurate conversion LUTs on the market for your camera called base LUTs. We've realized that there are color differences between camera sensors that a CST just doesn't take into account. We even have conversions for cameras that are not supported by a color space transform, as well as sensor-based matching, which produces even more accurate results. And here's the kicker. They are all developed for not only Rec. 709, but also DaVinci Wide Gamut. That's right, your D-Log M drone clips can now be graded in DaVinci Wide Gamut accurately, as well as a ton of other profiles. Pick up your base LUTs for your camera at gamut.io. Now, back to the video. So skipping over to this uh, red clip, I'm gonna talk about this chroma noise reduction selection right here. So if we're looking at the scope right here and we turn this on and then turn it off, look what's happening to the image. Here it's a little bit more blurry, which means there's a little bit more noise in the image. And then when we turn this on, 
it cleans up a lot better. So we're actually able to reduce this noise in the raw tab with chroma noise reduction, and we don't have access to that in the NRAW tab. It's only in this red pipeline structure. So this is really powerful, and this is one of my favorite options to select whenever I'm converting from NRAW into an R3D file. And this leads me to the main issue that I've had with NRAW, and that is the blue channel clipping. So I'm gonna move over to this clip right here, and you're gonna see uh, this is an NRAW shot. I'm gonna turn off a of CST, and we're gonna look at the original file. So this is the absolute original file, nothing changed, and you can see this crazy blue that is going on, this clamping, and it's just way out of bounds and everything. It's just not good. And this doesn't happen in ProRes. This doesn't happen in H.265. It only happens when you're in the container and RAW. Um, I also did check with ProRes RAW. So here we have, I think we have this clip right here. Let me check. I believe this also does happen with ProRes RAW. We don't have it on this shot. We have it over here. So there's ProRes RAW. And there's the red clip. If we go ahead and disable the red clip, we're looking at ProRes RAW, Icon RAW. Both of those are nearly the same. So they're very present, the same settings in ProRes RAW as it is in NRAW. But the workflow in this pipeline of, of the red conversion is actually much better and more efficient. So let's go back to this clip that we were looking at on the color page. And we're looking at the uh, Nikon clip. And we're going to go ahead and add a color space transform. And immediately, there's just this major issue. Now, what happens whenever we convert this same clip to R3D? This is what it looks like. This is the original clip. And you can see it completely takes away this issue that you had. Even if we took off chroma noise reduction, it's still not present. So this is how it looks whenever you film ProRes natively with a, a Nikon camera in N-Log. But when you shoot in NRAW, you go ahead and somehow there is this issue that I've come across that is happening specifically with the blue channel. Now I reached out to Nikon's team about this issue because I was trying to figure out how do I fix this, what's going on, and they recommended for me to open up this .nev file in the Red Cine Pro X software. So I'm going to navigate over here to the Red Cine X Pro software, and I've selected this .nev file, and it opens it up, and it allows us to see everything processed through red's color pipeline so here you can see i have all these exact same settings and i have chroma noise reduction also checked and what's interesting is look at the blue goes away there's not a problem with it so it seems to be something going on with the decoding that is happening in resolve with these NRAW clips and it's just not working out and it doesn't look good. So the workaround, if you wanna fix this blue clipping issue, then you wanna run it through the Red Cine X Pro software and then whenever you export that, you can utilize that as a red clip. However, until now, it's so much easier because all you need to do is just change the file extension and then you get access to all this and you don't even need to use this whole software anymore. And what I did is I did a test on this clip I already exported this, and I have this shot right here, and I'm going to go ahead and enable it right above the other red clip, and we're going to compare to see the differences. So this top clip right here is the one that came from Red Cine X Pro with the exact same settings I have here with the chroma noise reduction selected, and then this clip right here is the one where I just changed the file extension name. And whenever we add a color space transform to both of these clips, the same exact settings, we can see that they are completely the same. And that's where I think this hack comes into play so well is you can now select all of your .nev files and go ahead and just change the file extension and now you can import them into Resolve as red and you can use this chroma noise reduction and you can change all the settings and everything works the same. The color temp, the tint, the exposure assist or the exposure adjust and then your ISO. You might notice though it defaults to 320. That was the only thing I noticed is that it might not maintain the actual ISO setting that it was filmed at. And, and if that's the case, you can just manually adjust that here. But these results are fascinating because here we're looking at a Nikon raw clip. And then here we're looking at a red clip. And you can see which one clearly is better. Now, the one thing I have noticed with this is the, the reds are turning a little bit more pink whenever they're overly saturated. But the blues are properly, like the, the tone mapping of the blues are, are properly uh, adjusting for that really saturated highlights. And then overall, whenever I'm comparing all the clips, 
I, I feel that the main advantage with this is you don't get these clipping issues that you get with really saturated colors in NRAW. But whenever you convert it to R3D, immediately it goes away. And that's what's fantastic. I love this so much. This workflow is amazing. Before, whenever we were working with NRAW clips, I had to make my own conversion because I wanted to try to take care of this issue. And so I created our base LUTs that technically fixes this clamping issue. There's still some subtle issues you can see right here, but for the most part, it does clean up really well. And this has been the route that I've been taking where our base LUTs have taken into account the NRAW container adjustment inside DaVinci Resolve. And then we also have a standard um, N-Log LUT that's designed for ProRes and H.265. But if you're in NRAW, using this one will help take out that blue clamping issue. So our base LUTs have already taken care of this, but I'm using a CST just to show you the, the adjustments between the actual red clip and the NEV file version. All right, not only does this work in DaVinci Resolve, but this workflow works in Adobe Premiere. Let me show you how. All right, so we're gonna navigate over to Adobe Premiere Pro, and I have selected my .nev file. With the Premiere Pro beta version, you can now load a .nev file inside Adobe Premiere, and it utilizes Red's pipeline. So if we come over here to our FET controls, we click on source, and I'm looking at a .nev file, so an NRAW clip from Nikon, you click on source, and then you can see all the settings here, and we have it showing, showing up as red wide gamut RGB log 3G10. We can change our ISO, we can change our Kelvin and our tint, which is really fantastic. I do like to keep the output the same, and then I like to control that in my own Lumetri where I can load uh, my own conversion. So we can just turn on our red Komodo LUT here, and instantly the shot looks fantastic. Now, if we change the .nev file to R3D and we import it, it does the exact same thing. So here I selected it, click on source, effect controls, clicked on source there, and then you can see we have all those exact same settings. So if I just went ahead and turn on that same base slot and conversion, and then I'm just gonna stack this over this clip right here, and then just disable it on and off, there's no change. So you don't have to do this hack for Premiere Pro because it's already taken into account that .nev extension and it's already changing that whole pipeline over to Red's pipeline, which is honestly so much better because there's been issues where it's just not decoded it properly, it feels like, especially in, uh, in DaVinci Resolve. But they've got it right in the Red Cine X Pro app, which is fantastic, and now we get that same workflow in Adobe Premiere Pro, at least the beta version for now, and then in Adobe Pro, and then in DaVinci Resolve by just changing the extension from .nev to R3D. Now, the only caveat you have in Adobe Premiere Pro is you don't get access to the chroma noise reduction. I don't see an option where you can select that, so that is one downfall that I've seen, but hopefully with an update, they'll get access to that. This is so powerful because I don't have to do any round tripping at all. I don't have to run it through a different software, make any adjustments, transcode it and send it out. All I have to do is literally select the file name and change the file extension. And immediately I get access to this entire pipeline. This is phenomenal. And I feel like if you film on Nikon and if you shoot and raw clips, this should be your new workflow because this is honestly powerful. I'm getting even cleaner results. I'm getting better images. And Nikon's footage just looks phenomenal, especially when it's processed through this new workflow. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Uh, I'll be sharing more videos in the future that is going to be doing more of a breakdown with Red's footage from like a Komodo compared to an NEV file that's just converted to R3D. And I'll see the differences between those different color hues. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. If there's anything that I didn't cover in this video or you want me to expand upon, please let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.